Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics related to geography, models, theories in human geography as well as various topics on physical geography. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to go to the playlist and check out for all the videos that is available on various topics of physical geography, human geography, research methodology. Now in this session what we are going to learn is a very important theory that came in 1940s which was related to geostrategy and geopolitics which is also studied as part of political geography that is called Speakman's Rimland theory. Now remember before we have learned about heartland theory this is just one ahead extension of the same heartland into the rim land. The rim is the outskirt part, the rim that we say. So this rim land theory talked about just the opposite of what Heartland was said in Mackinder's work. So let's learn about this Speakman's concept here in 1940s and what does it have to say and what is its relevance in today's world as well. So watch the video till the end to understand all these concepts. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about this person called Nicholas John Speakman. Remember it's Speakman and his concept which is related to geostrategy and geopolitics part of political geography that we study. So remember he was basically an American political scientist. He was not a geographer that is important here and he was one of the founder of this classical realist school in American foreign policy. Right? and transmitting Eastern European political thought to US. So, Heartland and Rimland are just adjoining areas according to different theories. So, Rimland is Speakman's theory, Heartland we have already learned in Mackinder's theory, which was essentially in terms of Eastern Europe being the heartland of the world. Right? So, according to Speakman, what you observe? Geography is the most fundamental factor in foreign policy. So, how does this line sound? It is deterministic, right? Like Mackinder's theory was also deterministic, geographically deterministic, locationally deterministic. Similarly here, this Rimland theory is also dependent upon geographical factors, geographical location as fundamental factor for any geostrategy, any foreign policy. Right? So this is why it is important to understand the determinism here. Now even more important than the size of a state is what? Its location according to Speakman. And why it is important? Because both in world and in particular region, the location determines your power, your position, your geostrategy is based on that. Right? This is where he talked about in this statement. So if you observe this statement by Speakman, you can analyze what is the basic core of this theory. So states cannot escape their geography. This itself is saying that geography is the primary factor. It cannot be escaped by the states. In whatever decision a state takes in terms of foreign policy, in terms of geostrategy, strategic alliances in the world, geography has to be the premier factor, the main pivot factor. Right? So states cannot escape geography. However skilled the foreign office and however resourceful is the general staff, you cannot change the importance of geographical factor. This was deterministic statement. Then states foreign policy must reckon with geographical facts. Right? And it can deal with them skillfully or ineptly that depends upon the states. Right? This was again part of the same work. and. Last point is it can modify them but it cannot ignore them right for geography does not argue it simply is right. So if you observe in these statements of Speakman you can clearly see that it is a theory purely based on geographical locational factor being the most important point in terms of any decision in geopolitics, in terms of power alliances, in terms of control over the world, all those things that we also talked in Mackinder's work, right? So if you observe, many times you'll find Heartland and Rimland being presented together in one world map. Why? Because both the theories have similar nature, just that importance was given to different locations. Mackinder's Heartland theory gave importance to this particular area and Rimland gave importance to the outskirt, this inner crescent area according to the Heartland theory of Mackinder. Right? So there was a difference of opinion and also some kind of soft criticism by Speakman of Mackinder's work. 
right so if you observe here spickman's work are in two books now important is the name of the two books first is america's strategy in world politics which was published in 1942 remember it was an aid to the foreign policy of america right because after entry of us in world war ii when pearl harbor was attacked that was the time when america's strategy was very important and that is the time when this book was written where this was discussed right so concerned with the balance of power spickman argues what the isolationism now understand isolationism is being isolated so that you become more powerful and nobody attacks you which is reliantly on the oceans to protect us from all sides right this is what is isolationism he said what speakman said that this was bound to fail eventually why because now the power alliances and things are shifting in the world so us must take care of it right and geography of the peace which was published in 1944 this was very important volume and remember it was published just after speakman's death so he was not there to present his own work but this was eventually published so he explained his geo strategy and argued that balance of power in eurasia right remember this is eurasia here as the heartland theory suggested directly affected by the us security so if us has to take care of its security it needs to take care of this particular area and look into this rimland part now this rimland theory was part of this geography of peace book only right in 1944 so this is the geo strategy model together if you can observe the land power here and the ocean power here now this land and ocean power has been clearly discussed in the geo strategy in his work that is geography of the peace right now in 1944 spickman as the point of critique or antithetic you can say to the heartland theory presented his work titled the rimland theory in his book the geography of peace right and what did he say he gave a different interpretation of relative importance of the heartland that is land power what did he say relatively heartland was not important rather rimland was important right so if you observe this relative importance is of the surrounding inner and outer crescent this area not the heartland according to mackinder what is mentioned so his theory has been based on two basic postulates or principles of mackinder itself what is that geographical causation of history right and conflict between land power and sea power these are the building blocks the principles on which this heartland and rimland theory both of them have been built but remember heartland theory talks about this heartland as pivot area in the world while this rimland is being talked by speakman right so that's important so in speakman's model in this two tier system inner core and rimland if you observe the inner core is similar to what heartland is right so it is similar but he used the word inner core he said heartland is a region of physiographic difficulties with barriers and extreme climatic constraints like severe and others it is also resource dormant there is population which is very few here right and it does not have natural fortress nor the protected land as per speakman so it is allowing access to others such as central asian deserts steep low mountains river valleys and severe other gateways right so he kind of disqualified heartland as being more important rather he focused on his rimland right so similar to inner crescent in heartland theory if you remember all the majestic sea powers which scripted the history of modern civilization has to be in control of the rimland and you can see that historically according to speakman's work so all the area of rimland is connected to water the seas of the oceans that is china india asian countries that is association of southeast asian nation countries and gulf countries now remember in today's world how relevant do you find it importance of china importance of india asean countries gulf countries indo pacific region how more importantly it has gained strength in terms of being world's pivot world's most important locations right so to spickman heartland appeared less important than the rimland that is important and his famous dictum was who controls rimland rules eurasia and who rules eurasia is destined to rule the world right so the focus is eurasia only but in different ways that's important to remember here now the question arises why rimland is important than heartland according to speakman because of several reasons that he cites like so at least 40% of world resources are in rimland areas for example 
oil, continental shelf resources and others, metallic minerals, other things, right? Rimland countries have huge population like India and China, which is potentially a greater economic area, a market for all those countries, right? So that's why the biggest population will have biggest human resource. Youth population, for example, in India, we say, right? It's India's century because of youth dividend that we have in future. So, Rimland countries are undergoing a war against terror, the war against weapons of mass destruction. That is also one point here. So, Rimland countries are basically having these different conflicts and wars and that's where consolidation is required. And if somebody can consolidate them together and some power can have this kind of agglomeration, then they'll be the world leaders. So, Rimland consists mostly of developing nations such as India and other countries, but that's where the opportunity lies, right? So after 1950, remember what was the situation here? All the wars that you see here is in Rimland parts only, right? North, South Korea, Sino-India, Arab-Israel war, Indo-Pak war, Gulf crisis, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran war. And presently in news, you can see the situation of Afghanistan. What is happening there? What kind of issues and challenges are they facing with Taliban? Right? So, you can observe what is the change here from heartland concept to the rimland concept and how relevant in today's world rimland theory sounds. So, what is the basic criticism again here as well? Criticized on the ground of advancement of war and technology and nuclear deterrence as well, which was not discussed here. Then, Spickman underestimated the role of world community and UNO. The role of UN, he did not consider that part because before this UN could form, he actually died. So he did not have that idea that in future there will be a group of countries coming together under United Nations. So world today is a global village and he did not envision it. That world could be based on technology where it could be the rise of global cities as more important places than just countries, right? Rise of world cities. So international law does not permit territorial expansion in today's world. Remember the Radzil's concept that we have discussed in German geographers in evolution of geographical thought, the concept of Lebensraum, that is living space, was no longer applicable. Right? Because it considered state as a living organism and motivated Hitler for this expansionist approach. Right? For the greater German reach or we say realm. Right? But this is not in today's world applicable. That's where the criticism lies. So it is time of economic imperialism, indirect imperialism, that is economic control. So economic warfare, right? So economic imperialism and not that of political colonization, that is flooding of Indian markets by Chinese goods, you can see as one of the example, right? So China is leading in exports and also in manufacturing in many things in the world in many objects and most of its special economic zones are producing goods which is supplied across the world so what is happening china has become really important if you observe in that way so with make in india policy in today's world what we are doing we are also trying to overcome this situation where we are self-sufficient where we don't have to import or depend upon manufacturing of other countries and we can withstand this economic warfare we can be self-sufficient, right? And also we can dominate by exporting our goods, right? Made in India goods. That's where you find this thing. So this was not part of Rimland theory. Neither it was part of Heartland theory. They could not think about the world after wars, right? That is what the criticism is. So now when we have learned about various aspects of Speakman's Rimland theory, its various attributes, factors, different connotations, interpretations and also relevance in today's world. In the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different theories, models and also various parts of human geography. So stay tuned, stay safe and keep watching.